Welcome back to Tech Mimic, where you can simply view, imitate, replicate, and get on with your day. In this video, I am going to show how to watch the live stream of multiple TAPO TP Link devices in VLC Media Player. This could be considered as a follow up video to the two earlier videos how to watch your TAPO camera live with VLC Media Player, and how to record your TAPO camera with VLC Media Player. Both videos are linked in the description for your convenience. And as a starting point today, I'm going to assume that you have watched at least the video how to access the live stream and this is configured and working. And once this is in place, you should know by now that to access the live stream of your camera, you start VLC Media Player and then click Media and Open Network Stream. The basic form of the URL is RTSP colon forward slash forward slash, then the IP address, forward slash, and then stream one or stream two, depending on the video quality you are after. Again, if you need any help with this, please refer to the earlier videos. Click play and provide the username and password configured. After a few seconds, the live stream will start. Let's quit the live stream and I will show you how to configure the URL in such a way that the username and password are no longer being asked for, but will be populated automatically. The password will however be in clear text. Go back into VLC, then click Media and Open Network Stream. There in the URL, after the two forward slashes, add username colon password and then the add sign, just before the IP address. Click play to start watching the live stream, and this time you won't be prompted for the credentials. A request I have seen in the comments several times, as usual, thank you all for your interaction, is how to watch a second camera stream, because this option appears not to be visible anywhere in the VLC interface. The answer is simply to start a second VLC application, and from there to do the exact same thing for the other camera, so let's move this one to the side and open a second instance of VLC Media Player. And just do the exact same thing, but of course this time with a different IP address, because this is a different camera. And each camera will have its own IP address, username and password, so you should be able to apply this to as many streams as you want. Here there are only two, but you can start to envision how you can create your own little surveillance station. This of course could be all you need, but you can make life a bit more convenient by creating a shortcut per camera. In this video, I am demonstrating things on Windows 11, but this logic can also be applied to other operating systems if you know how to configure it. On the Windows search box, just search for VLC, or maybe it is already in the list of recent applications. From there, right click it and select Open File Location and then simply copy and paste the shortcut to the VLC application to where you want it. And in my case, I will use the Windows desktop. On the desktop, right click the shortcut and then select Properties. On the General tab, give the shortcut a descriptive name. Then go back to the shortcut tab, and find the text box that reads target, where the full path to the VLC executable is displayed. Don't change this, but go to the end of the line, type a space, and then the exact same URL that you have used earlier in VLC to access the live stream, including the credentials. Then click OK to save the configuration. And your life just became a bit easier, because now a double click on the shortcut launches the live stream. As always, you would need to give it a couple of seconds to connect. To do the same for the second camera, just copy and paste the shortcut. Go into the properties. Change the name. and then change the URL. You 
you can repeat this process for as many cameras as you need to do this for. And as a last step, you could add some automation so that multiple live streams can be started automatically by clicking a simple script. Let me open a Windows Explorer window and then navigate to the location of the shortcuts. In this case, this is still the Windows desktop where you can see the two shortcuts. Now check from the view menu that you are in the details view and from the same view menu, select show at the bottom and make sure that file name extensions is checked. This just makes the next step a bit easier. Right click on the empty space, select new and then text document and give it a name. I will use the name of live streams. As you can see, this is now a normal text file and to convert this into a script, simply rename the file and change .txt to .cmd and accept the file name extension change by clicking yes. From this point forward, if you double click, livestreams.cmd, that is now a script, will be executed. So to edit the script, right click it and then select edit in notepad. Now copy and paste the content of the target field from both shortcuts to the script as shown. And this should all be familiar to you by now. Now save and exit notepad. Let's test it. Execute the script by double clicking it. And this will start VLC Media Player and the live stream, but only for the first camera. And when you close VLC, only then it will start the VLC again for the second camera. This is because the lines in the script are executed sequentially, so one after another, but of course we want both streams at the same time. This is a simple adjustment. Right click the script and select Edit in Notepad. Then at the beginning for both lines at start, double quote, double quote. And in between the double quotes, I'm adding an optional label A and B, but this is not needed in this setup. Now save and exit notepad. And you have changed the script from sequential execution to parallel execution, meaning that both lines will be executed simultaneously. Let's give it a go. And there you have it, a script that automatically launches two or more live streams for multiple cameras in VLC. You can further automate things by adding either the individual shortcuts or the script to the Windows Auto Start functionality, maybe for a specific user account. And if you want, undo the earlier changes to hide the file extensions again, or switch back to icon or list view instead of the details view. That's it. Hope it helped. And if it did, Please like the video and keep it up. Until next time, bye!